So, well, welcome in to an impromptu show. Uh, didn't really promote this at all. Uh, a little bit outside of our normal schedule, but I was kind of decompressing some of the work that I did last night and just couldn't stand. But normally what I do is if I do something and I feel like it's not what I want it to be, it just kind of chews at my brain uh, just over and over and over again. So in order to alleviate the pain that I'm feeling in my mind, the only way to do it is to get down here and roast again. Uh, so we are just going to go live. Not even sure if anyone will even pick this up. Uh, if they do, great. If they don't, no big deal. Really, I just want to get the information out there on stream, both to you know keep myself streaming, uh, get better kind of my feel with working around the new machine. Uh, it also kind of shows me what I want to change, what I want to you know, do different. Uh, it will also be good uh, to go back and log the film. Um, and full disclosure, the going back over it is really what's been kind of nagging at me or bothering me. So uh, what I'm going to do, first I'm going to make myself a little bit of coffee because I'm on vacation, so why not? Might as well be good and uh, caffeinated to do the film here. And then we will get started after that. So. Everything is uh, good to go and copacetic as it were. So, kick back, relax, and we're going to be doing a couple of rows. Also, not quite sure how many streams I'll be doing uh, over the next couple of nights just because basketball. So I figured I was watching a game upstairs, wasn't too interested in it. So I was like, well, now would be a good time to come down here, get some streaming done. And we'll go from there. So with that said, this is Judy. Judy is just trying to balance out her temperature right now. So while she's getting all uh, where she wants to go pre-roast. And when I say balancing out, what I essentially mean is that I'm, I'm preheating it to 230 degrees. That's about 458 degrees Fahrenheit or so. Uh, that is just the preheating temperature that I chose for these beans. It tends to be a pretty agreed upon that that is just low enough. It doesn't burn the beans, but just high enough that it does let the roast get to a uh, get off to a good start. Uh, but then why it takes longer, because uh, it is actually at that temperature, what is actually going to take a little bit longer here is it's going to try to balance this out. So air that's being brought into the machine, it's going to, doesn't want to be fluctuating a lot. So that is what's going on there. So let me see if my water warm yet. Take myself a cup. So you might be wondering why is it that I decided that I just needed to get down here and roast. Brian, what, what happened with last night's roast? Why didn't you like it? Didn't it look good? It looked good, but honestly, while I was roasting it, it just lost a ton of energy. And now that I have a machine that is somewhat manipulatable, that is going to be an issue in that the more value variables I manipulate, the more things can kind of go really, really good, but also the chance that they can go really, really bad. And in the case of last night, the, and I'll go through the graph with you here in a second, well, really for myself, uh, but it just, it lost energy. And it tried to pick up energy and it just really just wasn't able to develop well. So it lost too much energy where I wanted it to be energy. I tried to recreate the energy towards the end and the whole thing just kind of spiraled out of control. And the resulting process was something that looked roasted but didn't taste or smell. 
didn't have a lot of appeal to it. So I'm going to make some adjustments tonight in an effort to get things kind of back on track. So beans into dreams. Welcome back, uh, guy on fire. Normally, it's a little bit more lively here in the uh, chat. Uh, a lot of my, my a lot of my earlier followers uh, are on spring break and such. But yes, uh, beans into dreams is the overall uh, goal here tonight. Uh, last night's beans, although they had the hint of early uh, dream-like qualities, the overall product just didn't match what I was looking for. So back down here tonight, going to do a very similar roast, went over some of the analytics and uh, just tried to get a better look and gonna make some adjustments. I, I don't want it lively. I want this stream all myself. Well, right now, guy on fire, you got it. So this is your personal stream. If you got any questions, uh, I am going to kind of dissect a couple of things as well as get a little coffee to drink. Uh, feel free to drop those in. What I'm doing here is just making a little bit of an AeroPress. This is an Ethiopian uh, that I did last week. When I did develop uh, development time about 20 seconds, that's about, I mean, not 20 seconds, 20%. Uh, really what that means is that it just is a uh, light roast Ethiopian coffee. So I had some success with early Ethiopians, but for whatever reason, the Burundi I was doing last night just totally was a complete and total mess. So I don't normally stream back to back to back nights, but it was uh, keeping me up and Really uh, just had to get down here and fix some of the mistakes that I made. It's a good brew. So right now, we're just uh, getting the machine warmed up, getting it ready to go. Enjoy that uh, cup of Ethiopian. Ethiopian is probably my favorite book to roast and drink. Uh, it tends to be a lighter coffee. And I've found with my original machine, I first started roasting on a Beemore 2000. Um, light coffees were pretty easy to obtain, some good results there. Now that I've moved to this uh, bullet, the light coffee has also been somewhat easier ethiopians have been kind of i just have a lot better nose and ear and eye for them uh this burundi i've been working with got a five pound bag here from sweet maria's got some, had some good results on the be more but i've yet to really get it to a point that i want it to be on this machine so we uh it's kind of been my achilles heel i worked out a recipe i think is going to be a little bit more promising uh, this time around. So we will make some adjustments and see if we can get a little bit better results or at least for the overall roast to go more than I, what I'm looking for. So for this roast, I'm going to stick with one pound. Um, that is 454 degrees, I mean, degrees. Uh, grams, so go ahead and just get it measured out here. One pound is generally considered to be standard in roasting because one pound after it roasts is 12 ounces. 12 ounces is probably, if you ever bought coffee from a grocery store, you're most likely buying coffee at 12 ounce bags. That's kind of the only, only reason why I've been roasting at a pound, just because it's probably what I have, what I'm most familiar with, and what people that order coffee are also most familiar with. I'm 
Got our pound measured out there. Once the machine says that it's ready to go, it's all warmed up where it needs to be, it's going to start saying charge. And what that means is it's reached the 458 degrees Fahrenheit that is necessary or that I would like uh, the drum to be just to get the beans going at a really quick rate. Kind of uh, point out where some of the trouble started to arise on this roast yesterday. So if you'll notice, if you're looking at the graph, you'll notice that in about five minutes dips. For a good coffee, that's what we call the uh, yellowing uh, phase, or some people call it the early roasting phase. This is where a lot of the cocoa, a lot of the chocolatey, the caramely, uh, the burnt sugar flavors begin to develop in the coffee. And what happened last night was the power wasn't enough. So early on when I was drying it, I wasn't pumping enough heat into the beans. Uh, my guess is the Rundi, uh, they tend to be a little bit more dense. They don't take uh, heat as easily. And what happened was the beans just weren't taking heat. So in that yellowing phase, dropped off. You see the ROR drops off pretty steeply. Made some adjustments to try to recatch the roast and just lost strength the entire time. Um, what this can equate to is if you're ever cooking meat and you put a meat on too cold of a pan, it doesn't get that bright caramelized brown color on the outside of the meat. It just kind of looks one note or even red meat, it looks kind of gray. That is essentially the flavors that happen with my coffee. Although it looked good, from smelling it and tasting it, it just is not going to be I mean, I haven't gotten it in the cup yet. I will uh, cup some of it to, well, probably yeah, tomorrow morning. But I can already tell that coffee's going to suck. And that's not what we do here in the Fat Beans Laboratory. We are shooting for something a little better than suck. So we are back at it, trying to see if we can't fix some of our previous mistakes. So, get you powered in here. So, uh, this is in, this is what is called the bullet roaster. Kind of has a bullet profile. Uh, it is a drum roaster. Uh, nowhere near what a commercial drum roaster would be. Um, it is much more scaled down. It does have some really good instruments inside of it. It has a, a thermal bean temperature. Uh, that's how it kind of can keep the temperature of the beans as well as a bean probe inside of the drum that also keeps uh, a temperature reading on the beans. This is how I'm able to make all these graphs. And these graphs are really how I make a lot of my decisions while I roast. This is only about the seventh time that I've roasted with this roaster and really as much as I kind of get beat up myself for not roasting to the level that I wanted to, really it's just, it takes, it's like anything, any sort of a new machine, especially one with this, uh, this high caliber, it just takes time to get it all dialed in. So, um, although it did cause me to lose a little bit of sleep, just being upset, uh, I think for the most part, I got a pretty good control over it. A couple of tweaks tonight. I think the roast tonight should go a lot better, but thought the roast last night was going to go good too though so nothing else i got a hot cup of joe here at 8 30 central time so life could be worse might not be able to sleep tonight but I said i'm on spring break so woo woo we are just waiting for the roaster itself to kind of even out this is 2 30 that's in Celsius, and we are trying to get that number to just stop popping around. Here in about, I'm gonna guess about two, about a minute or so, it should start flashing charge, and we should start turning those these beans into dreams. As always, got any questions, coffee, or anything, drop those in the chat. I'll be happy to answer those here on a Thursday night in March. 
Uh, so if you got anything just on your mind, pop those in the chat. If not, just uh, watch the sweet, well, listen to the sweet sounds of roasting while a middle-aged man creates magic in his basement. Live look. This isn't actually what a roast looks like. This face. This also gives a look at some of the data that we're together here. So, just like that, it said charging, charged up, ready to go. Cool thing about this roaster, as soon as I drop the green, because of the temperature device in there, it's going to know, and it's going to start roasting right away. Initially, we just want the beans to kind of give them a little bit of time to heat up. We're not going to throw a ton of heat at them to start. We're going to let them get into the machine, get comfortable, start soaking up some of the drums heat, and we'll uh, kick up the power as we go. Just like that, it knows, Graf kicks. We are off to the races, kids. So, you can see they're green. Watch this, because this window here gives you a pretty good look at the overall phase. The phases that we're shooting for are going to be green, yellow, light brown, first crack, which will be a brown, and we're going to try to take it to a medium brown. And I will show you each of these as we go through the phases. So for the first minute, we're just kind of backed off the heat just a little bit. We're just letting it the beans get comfortable in the roaster, and then we're going to kick this up to a pretty high power setting, uh, at least for the first four minutes. So that's a minute, jump up to P8. We're going to leave the fan alone for now. It's going to let it just start to dry out in here. We're shooting for about four minutes. In four minutes, hopefully these green beans have turned into yellow beans. That means that they have, most of the water has escaped in the form of gas and the beans have dried out enough a lot like autumn leaves or like leaves that you would see um, as they drop their green and they turn yellow and brown. Same phases with the uh, beans. Uh, beans not being leaves, but they kind of go through the same drying process when applied this much heat. I'm just reposition ourselves here. Grab my notes. Right now the overall roast is climbing pretty fast. Not anything to concern about, but we will want to kind of watch that to make sure that this uh, thing doesn't get out of control too early on. Should balance out here in about a minute. If not, we might have to walk down the power just a little bit. Give all of you at home a little little view of what I'm seeing. Beans are still a kind of a palish green. We're going to need to replace this beam dam. It doesn't uh, have the autofocus that uh, I think would really help. Look at that in. Always making adjustments here in the uh, fat beans laboratory, but... So yellowing is just that. You can see that it's m moving more and more towards yellow. Also back here, uh, I don't know if you can see this on the smaller screen, 
as the water begins to escape with vapor, you can really smell it. And what I'm smelling right now is a real strong, almost like drying grass moving to kind of bread. It's that bread smell that we're going to signify as yellowing. So go ahead and kick our fan on here. Looks like that's about what I would call yellowing. So we'll call this yellow point. And we're going to walk the power down, kick the fan up. And all of this is meant to try, start trying to bring the overall roasting curve down a little bit. Just like that. See the power moving it down has uh, definitely lowered our rate rise of rate of rise. All rate of rise means is how many degrees Celsius it's picking up every 30 seconds. So what we want that rate of rise to do is just slowly meander down as the roast progresses. So. Just slowly walking down our temperature right now. See it's moved into a more of a caramely color, a cinnamon almost. The overall scent notes have definitely increased mightily. Our rate of rise is steadily declining, so that's good.
Just hit first crack. Now we're going to let the beans develop for about 25% of the overall roast time. Give you a sneak peek of what we're seeing. Look right at about light roast. For this particular coffee, we want it to have a little bit more time to develop. Tuned in late. What bean is this? This is the same bean that I did last night. Wasn't really thrilled with the results that I was getting pre-taste. So went back, adjusted the recipe a little bit, and going to see if I can't get a little bit better roast on this. So this is the same Burundi that I did last night in an effort to see if we can't get a little bit more uh, tamed down to what I was looking for. Good to have you in, JMCD. Hope it's all going well. There it is. Okay. So, overall, much looks like it roasted much better this time. 
So, last time, although the color was okay, it just, I feel like it didn't get enough heat to start out with. This overall, this roast was a lot more perky. It uh, kind of held a little bit tighter to what we were trying to do. And this, allow, I think it's going to allow for a lot more flavors to be roasted in here. Really, as I was chewing beans last time, the overall flavor of the roast just tasted dead. So, went back, made some light adjustments, and for the most part, I think we're able to really kind of get a lot more flavor. Just by chew testing it, this is going to make a lot better coffee than the coffee that would have been made last night. So, now chew test alone isn't going to really mean anything. We need the coffee to degas, kind of settle down a little bit, but I think this is going to create a much better overall roast, um, a lot better taste. So. so, now JMCD, it was uh, brought to my attention that you were going to be looking for some more coffee. Is there any uh, particular flavors that you're looking for? Just so I can begin to put something together for you. Um, now that you are drinking coffee, uh, for those of you who don't know, JMCD uh, spent the first 66 years of his life uh, never drinking coffee, and the starting of watching this show and the bullying by me uh, got him into drinking some coffee. And now he is uh, here to be on the wagon, as it were. So he, uh, I would like to know if he has any sort of requests. I can meet those requests. So, JMCD, let me know if there's anything particular that you want in your next roast. So, while I'm down here, I'm not going to roast tomorrow night because I'm just going to watch March Madness, which that is uh, tis the season. I'm going to go ahead and drop this. It's a very similar. I'm going to do the exact same thing that I just did with this one on this uh, with this particular one. Uh, this is for Kyle Ross. You may have seen. You may have seen Kyle Ross at some of the other shows. So we're going to do a pound that I promised for him for coming down in this. Yes, uh, we've agreed on what we both want to try next time. We'd like to try something with caramel or chocolate. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll make you a medium roast. Might even let you try this. This one I just did, see if that's kind of where you're at. And if you still want more caramely and chocolatey, we could even go a little bit darker. So we'll start with that. All right. I'm gonna let the machine just kind of balance out here. I'm gonna clean a couple of things up and we will drop the coffee. Vacuum out here. So what we're doing for Kyle is another Burundi, very similar to what we did. Um, again, this is natural sweetness, complex uh, building spices. This has a honey, loose leaf fat, black tea, bittering cocoa when roasted, good for espresso. So we're gonna take this medium as well, try to do mirror exactly what we just did, see what kind of results we can get from that. Try to do very similar. Hopefully we can get some similar color results. We'll give this uh, batch to Kyle. Let him uh, 
take it. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Kyle is a professional barista by trade. So we'll let him get in there, really use his barista talents to stir up a couple of different brews. And he'll be able to give me a real good uh, rundown as far as the barista community as to how this coffee is performing. If I get back and Kyle is like, this coffee is performing poorly, We'll make some adjustments. If he says this coffee is performing well, well then I think we've uh, gone ahead and cracked the code of the Burundi medium roast. So that's the hopes. We will see how that works out. Get the rope going. We get it up to speed. See what we get get from this. So this is the, again, this Burundi is a little bit different. It's got some cocoa with the dark roast. It's uh, like a lot like other Africans. It's got more of a mellow, not a real rich, robust taste, more of a tea kind of quality to it. So that is something unique about this coffee. Uh, it's kind of why Kyle picked it out. So hopefully we can maintain as many of those unique qualities as we possibly can. So, just joining us. This is the second roast of tonight. And right now, we're just trying to get to the coffee to the point where it's dried out, referred to as yellowing. Not quite there yet. take this roast to somewhere around medium um, not anywhere even still not close to that second crack second crack is more of a dark roast again we're just going to try to get this up to medium and pull it out after it's developed about 25 seconds Hit yellowing point. Kind of see. Now it is what we call roasting. Roasting right along. How's everyone's week going so far? I know it's almost done. Everyone got your brackets in? Got all your March Madness stuff? I mean, we're this is kind of Two years of expectations. I'm going to be completely and totally uh, candid with everyone. I probably haven't watched more than one basketball game all year. Uh, it's not that I don't like college basketball. It's just really with uh, just everything that's going on. 
college sports are kind of those things that benefit from crowds and uh the empty the empty things are have not been going so brackets are in full disclosure i gotta go and do all of my brackets probably in the next uh next two or three hours so maybe uh burning the old midnight bracket oil i have no idea so if you guys got any thoughts about who uh i should claim as my champion that'd be really appreciated because I'm just throwing darts right now. This might be the year that I'd pick like 11, 11 seat to win. Maybe Michigan State. Maybe that's who I'll pick. I don't know if that's an idiot's gambit or not, but I literally have no idea. Any advice from the Beanheads would be uh, much appreciated. KU, KU's got a pretty rough, uh, pretty rough little go to get themselves to the point where they're winning the championship. I think Gonzaga. I don't I haven't watched Gonzaga play at all, but isn't that like the, uh, isn't that like the hot, hot take? JMCD. I, I don't know a lot about the bracket, but I'm pretty sure Creighton and KU both uh, are in the same. Same, uh, same little go there. Pick by mascot. Well, then it's got to be the Bonnies. St. Bonaventure. Are they in it? If they are. That's my pick. Picking the Bonnies. Can't see the bank beans changing color. And right now, they're just getting ready to hit that first crack mark. So they're getting there very quickly. Got his first crack. Sister Jean. That's she from St. Bonaventure too? Fighting Sister Jeans? Loyola, Loyola Marymount, there you go. I knew it was one of those private schools. I heard Sister Jean got vaccinated and she's on her way. She's gonna be in the, be in, be in attendance.
All right, well, there you have it. A nice, nice shot of the filter there. But overall, I think this is visually, the rows developed very nicely. Could have walked a little bit of heat off there towards the end a little quicker. Uh, but I think for the most part, I think it hit all the development milestones that I wanted. I mean, again, I always say we're going to know a lot more once it gets in the cup. And luckily, this one will be cupped by a pro. So Kyle should be able to give us a pretty good rundown of what he thinks about this coffee. I'll also just save a little bit for my own tasting pleasure. That way I can get a taste on it. So don't tell them, but you know, it's a free bag, so save a little bit just so I can taste it out too. And get this sent on to Kyle so that he can start dissecting the new roast. Looks good. Sometimes looks can be deceiving, but I think overall, kind of where we want it to be. What kind of beans? This is also a Burundi, which is an African bean. Uh, it tends to be a little bit more of the more tea-like. Doesn't have all the rich fruity flavors that say a Kenyan or an Ethiopian have. People tend to take Burundi's a little bit darker than that of the Kenyans or Ethiopians. And for that, it's a, people treat this kind of coffee is they treat it like a medium roasted coffee, but it doesn't have a very rich, robust taste. It's almost like a tea. So you can get some of those cocoa tastes without that rich roasted flavor. And that is one of the benefits of the Burundi. And I do believe that is why Kyle chose this particular roast. I think he wanted to see if he couldn't experience a little bit of that tea flavor. So we'll get that out to Kyle, see what Kyle thinks. If Kyle tastes it and says, this is swelled well, then back to the drawing board. But if Kyle tastes it and says, this is fantastic, well, we'll, uh, notes of that and try to keep reproducing that. So that is the Burundi. All right. So another uh, kind of a quiet show and that's all right. Like I said, I didn't do a ton of promotion for this. Uh, generally, we usually roast uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, this being an exception because the March Madness as well as me being on uh, spring break. Um, it is kind of a little bit more touch and go. Uh, just a couple of notes about what it means as an affiliate, since some of you have been with us since day one. Um, just to give you an idea of what this affiliate means. I did some research. First, if you'll notice, look in your chat screen, you now have the option to, to uh, gain fat beans. All that is is that if you watch longer, you get some channel points. Uh, here in the next day or so, I'll be working on making unique emotes. So if you go to the chat, you'll notice these emoticons. The emoticons will be just stream specific. So right now, if we send this out, you can see I've sent an emoticon. Um, you will have access to some of those that are channel specific. So while you're chatting, I will make some for you. And that should be a learning curve for me. Um, not really at the streaming position where I can really go out and uh, hire anyone to make my fancy emotes. So I'll just make them for you. And we all can laugh about their in inferior quality. Also, you might notice that when you watch the stream, there's commercials now. Uh, that is kind of Twitch's game. They are in the, they're kind of in the market to make money, much like YouTube videos that they become more watched. Uh, they do have commercials. This stream, now that it becomes more watched, uh, it has streams, at, it does have commercials as well. 
The quickest way to bypass those commercials is to do what's called subscribe. Now, if you're a ride or die beanhead, I don't expect you to go out and subscribe with your own money because you really help build the channel. Uh, there is one way that you can subscribe technically for free. Uh, if you subscribe using Amazon Prime, so if you have Amazon Prime, and I'm guessing most of you do, uh, if you do have Amazon Prime, and a lot of you I pulled over here to Twitch, so you probably aren't subbing with some, someone else. If you are, that's fine too. Uh, you can use your Twitch, excuse me, your Amazon Prime. You get one free Twitch per account. Uh, so if you are really bu bummed out by the commercials and you want to uh, subscribe to the channel, I don't know what it means for me on my side. I think there's some monetary incentive, like a dollar a month, but gets rid of the commercials and it helps me. So maybe we could put $1 into getting a new bean camp. So if you have any questions about that, I can help you out, even though if maybe people in the chat are a little bit more uh, versed with it. I'm not, um, again, I'm as probably as new to Twitch as you guys are. Uh, but you know, just because we're new to it doesn't mean we can't figure it out. That's everyone was new to something at some point, right? You were new to walking, got that figured out pretty quick. So we'll, we'll uh, see. I'll add some emotes, a couple other things, and we'll see if uh, we can have some fun with that kind of stuff. So that is that. Uh, the We're going to get back to more normal roasting schedule, like I said, next week. Now, I know we've done Saturday shows, and now this will be the second week where I skip the Saturday show. I get the... Uh, second blast as it were on saturday and i don't know if i'll feel good bad and different sick not sick uh just to give myself a little bit of space if i do feel sick i'm probably not going to stream on saturday just to uh in case i, I don't want to be here with the headache and trying to be down here roasting and moving stuff around so that is that other than that uh i think we'll call it Call it good for tonight. I got a lot of coffee now to kind of dissect, and pour over, pour through. Do have a big shipment coming in from Sweet Maria's. This will be, I think I bought 50 pounds total, three different varieties. So we're gonna be trying to get those three coffees kind of all tuned up where we want those to be. Uh, so, that should all put Judy too here through her through the paces here in the uh, next couple weeks. Yeah, I can't wait either, Jay Brogren. Um, I mean, my head and heart tell they like, uh, tell me that it should be pretty good, but uh, we'll let Kyle go ahead and be the final judge of that. So I don't know. You know, anytime you got a new roaster. It's just all about tweaking it. Now, I'm going to be able to taste it and have a good idea of where it's at, but it's always good to have someone else. Also, anyone knows, so everyone knows we are working on a website. Yeah, so we are slowly moving towards legitimacy as far as the business side of things go. So we are working on a website. Uh, we're hoping the website allows people to both order and kind of give me some... I guess direction if they want it. So as you get more used to the website, you can go on there. Uh, you will be able to put your order in and also say, I'd like to try medium, light, dark. Uh, hopefully if we make it the way that we think we will, I'll be able to put some notes in there. So notes like this is the flavors, this is what I used it for, this is what I recommend. And then if you still are like, well, I want to try that darker roast, you can, you know, put like a pound dark roast. Um, now that all sounds good in theory, but if any of you've ever worked with websites before, sometimes theory and practice tend to run uh, counter counter uh, from where from each other. So, but we were we're gonna put something together and hopefully start to manufacture a little bit more legitimacy on that on that piece of it. So. That's uh, really all I got overall. Good to hear from some of you tonight. Again, somewhat, 
subdued, but you know, we're just uh, turning beans into dreams down here. So anyway, I think that's all I got for tonight. So I'll go fill up those brackets. Go team. Who knows who will uh, who will end up being our team of choice? But as always, stay caffeinated. Be easy. I'll see you guys on the other side.